This is going to be a long one. Hello again, and welcome back. Final Fantasy 3 is one of Naoki Yoshida's favorite Final Fantasies, and it shows. There is almost a major reference to Final Fantasy 3 in every single Final Fantasy 14 expansion that the game has done so far. Today, we'll be going through as much of it as we can. So buckle up, this is Final Fantasy 3 references in Final Fantasy 14. Now, before we start, just a heads up, these videos will start to have a lot of spoilers for both the game we're referencing and Final Fantasy XIV, so consider this your spoiler warning. Final Fantasy III was released in Japan as the last Final Fantasy game for the Famicom system in 1990. However, the West did not see a release until 2006 when the game was remade in 3D for the Nintendo DS. The 2D version did not see an official release in the West until the Pixel Remastered version in 2021. Now before we go into gameplay, I wanted to talk about the opening of A Realm Reborn. I truly believe that while not a direct reference, the second half of A Realm Reborn's opening is inspired by the DS opening of Final Fantasy III. We start off with characters riding chocobos, there's cinematic shots of the crystal tower, the black mage is leading the group to a clearing, and even behemoth is shown in both openings. Of course, this could all be coincidental, but I feel as though especially with Yoshida's love for Final Fantasy III, some of this could be a cool callback. Now, let's talk about Eternal Wind. Eternal Wind is the main theme of Final Fantasy III, and it is played as the overworld theme. This theme appears numerous times in Final Fantasy XIV as well, such as the end of the Crystal Tower questline and at the end of Shadowbringers. Eternal Wind is also heard as a short segment in the Shadowbringers theme, signifying the expansion's strong connection to the Crystal Tower. And finally, there is a piano version of Eternal Wind, often played during cutscenes in 5.3. If it isn't clear already, they love this theme. Next, we'll be looking at gears and minions. In the original Final Fantasy III, your characters start off with the job called Onion Knights. Their helmets are in Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV has onion helms of a blue and red variation. The blue variation was attainable from the 1.0 Collector's Edition, and unfortunately, it can no longer be obtained. The red variation of the Onion Helm was obtainable through Quick Ventures, and you may still see listings on the market board. The rest of the Onion Gear, such as the Onion Doublet, used to be attainable through Quick Ventures as well, but apparently it is not available anymore and has been removed from loot tables. I'm not too sure about that, and I'll happily pin a comment if this isn't true. Next, there are several sets in the Circus Tower Raid that drop gear that are references to the original bosses in the last dungeon of Final Fantasy III. 
Specifically, these gear sets reference Titan or Plagathon in Final Fantasy XIV, Amon, Scylla, and Guardian or Glacia Labolas. More information about this raid later on. As for minions, there are two that reference Final Fantasy III. These are the Wind Up Onion Knight and the Puff of Darkness. The Wind Up Onion Knight is a 3D version of the 2D sprite for the Onion Knight, and it is attainable after the last boss of Circus Tower. The Puff of Darkness is attainable after the last boss of the World of Darkness. Now we'll be moving on to the main content. In Final Fantasy III, the job system is expanded upon from the first game. Now you have the ability to change your job at any time. Final Fantasy XIV incorporates this system as well. Aside from the original six jobs from Final Fantasy I, Final Fantasy III includes many more jobs. These jobs include the Knight or Paladin, Dark Knight, Scholar, Bard, Summoner, and Sage, all of which are in Final Fantasy XIV as well. The Summoner also has artifact armor that reflects the original upgrade to Summoner, from Evoker to Summoner. Final Fantasy III was also the first time we saw the iconic horn for the Summoner as well. In A Realm Reborn, there is a quest called Primal Focus. This quest has you take on the extreme versions of Ifrit, Titan, and Garuda. And the rewards for these quests are item level 90 weapons, all of which have names that came from Final Fantasy III. Specifically, these weapons were found in the Ancient's Maze and Eureka. And before we move on, these three primals first appeared in Final Fantasy III, Ifrit and Titan being summons alongside Shiva, Ramu, Odin, Leviathan, and Bahamut, and Garuda appears as a winged beast boss. The Nepta Dragon appears in Final Fantasy III as an unbeatable boss that can only be quelled through retrieving the Nepto Eye. In Final Fantasy XIV, the Nepto Dragon is a fish that needs to be obtained for the final part of the Feast of Famine quest. In Heaven's Ward, there's an area called the Sea of Clouds. While the Final Fantasy series is known for floating continents, Final Fantasy III was the first to have the floating continent as an area in the game. In Anti-Tower, there are mobs called the Wind-Up Magnus and the Wind-Up Viking. These enemies have their look based off the Magnus job and the Viking job in Final Fantasy III. In Stormblood, there is an area called Eureka the Forbidden Land. This area was where you worked on your relic weapon in Stormblood which was the most powerful weapons in the game at the time of the final release. This is a reference to the dungeon within Circus Tower with the same name, Eureka. In this dungeon in Final Fantasy III, you'll find a lot of the most powerful weapons in the game. In Shadowbringers, there is a dungeon called The Twinning, and it takes place inside the first version of the Crystal Tower. The music even reflects this as it has a segment of the Crystal Tower theme within it. And now, the big Final Fantasy III reference, the Crystal Tower Raid Series. This raid series is a massive reference to the final dungeons of Final Fantasy III. When you first start the Crystal Tower storyline, you are met with a set of gates that prohibit you from entering the Crystal Tower area. You must obtain four fangs in order to get past the gates leading to the labyrinth. This whole sequence is the same in Final Fantasy III as you collect fangs as well in order to access the Crystal Tower area. Right before we take down these gates, Grahatia proposes that we call the group Noah. 
This is a reference to the mage Noah in Final Fantasy III. We start off with the Labyrinth of the Ancients raid dungeon, in which a lot of the bosses in the game are enemies you'll find in the Ancients maze in Final Fantasy III, such as the Bone Dragon, Thanatos, and King Behemoth. The music of Labyrinth of the Ancients is the Crystal Cave music in Final Fantasy III. The final boss of the Labyrinth is Plagathon. This boss has the appearance of the boss Titan in Final Fantasy III. This boss was also redone from the Battle Theme 2 of Final Fantasy III. Next, Circus Tower is the next raid dungeon of the Crystal Tower series. When you first start this set of quests, you meet Doga and Une, two descendants of Emperor Zand, Zande, Z Zidon. Zandi. Zandi. In Final Fantasy III, Doga and Une were powerful mages alongside Zande. Doga and Une's theme also appear in Final Fantasy XIV as well. Circus Tower is also where you'll find the bosses from the Forbidden Land, Eureka, Scylla, Guardian, or Glacia Lobolas, and Amon all appear in the Circus Tower as bosses. The music used in Circus Tower is the Crystal Tower theme in Final Fantasy III. And the final boss is none other than Zande. And finally, we enter the World of Darkness. The theme of the World of Darkness is redone from the World of Darkness theme from Final Fantasy III. 
In this dungeon, we see the bosses of Ariman, Five-Headed Dragon, and Cerberus. These same bosses protected the Dark Crystals in Final Fantasy III. And now before we move on to the final part of World of Darkness, we're going to talk about the Warriors of Darkness. In Final Fantasy XIV, the Warriors of Darkness appear as warriors from another world, in which they also work to try and prevent their world from succumbing to their apocalypse. In Shadowbringers, your character becomes a Warrior of Darkness to prevent the Flood of Light from happening in the first. In Final Fantasy III, the Warriors of Darkness also prevented the Flood of Light in their world and helped you on your journey to prevent darkness from spreading across your world. And now we meet the Cloud of Darkness. Very faithful to the original, the Cloud of Darkness takes on the form of a giant green humanoid. This is very much a 3D form of the 2D sprite version of the Cloud of Darkness and they perform their signature move, Particle Beam. The theme of the boss music is none other than our own boss music from Final Fantasy III. Now before we end, we also need to talk about one more fight, Eden's Promise Umbra. In an attempt to balance out the light that your character favors towards, you summon the Embodiment of Darkness. You take on another form of the Cloud of Darkness. This time, they take on their Dissidia form. Now this isn't directly a Final Fantasy 3 reference, but since the Cloud of Darkness is a villain representative for Dissidia, I feel like it's worthy of a mention. In this fight, they have variations of their signature move, Particle Beam. These variations are all abilities that don't appear in Final Fantasy III, but rather in Dissidia, such as Wide Angle, Anti-Air, and O-Form. And there we have it. Final Fantasy III was such a massive influence on Final Fantasy XIV, and it really shows. It's a good thing too, as the game was not available to much of the world until much later, but their legacy always lived on. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. It will always be appreciated. And next time, we'll be looking at the world of Final Fantasy IV. But after Endwalker, as a lot of Final Fantasy IV references have already been conferred, and I'm really excited. So I will see you guys then.